responsive teaching is phase one fast. So I'll just recap. Stage one, do now. Stage two, exposition. Stage three, modeling. Stage four, checking for understanding slash questioning. And now we're on to the actual responding to those questioning. Okay, talk us through this. So, so I, I, I guess we covered bits of it already, but because this is about lesson planning, you can plan the questions. All those questions I've spoken about, that yeah. sequence, you can yeah. plan. But I didn't know the route I wanted to take. So actually I had one more set ready of set questions ready after this, which was um, jumping straight into X's outside and X's inside the brackets, then we're having squares and cubes and all that. So I was, I was just ready for them to smash this, I was ready for them to be really yeah. awful at, at, yeah. at this. Anytime students are showing me their, their answers, it's pausing. It's, I think it's one of the worst things you can do is to pretend everyone's got it right and some kids haven't, because I think that kid feels ignored. Um, so if someone's got it wrong, you haven't got to name them, but you can say, we're 90% there. I'm not going to where hundred percent there. And that, that buy-in I think is, is quite important. Those kids feel seen and everyone gets the purpose. They know it's my job not to teach them, but to teach yes. the class. Um, so it, it keeps them motivated as well. Um, and if, if you get to a certain point that you know, right, okay, I'm going to set the class off, but I'm going to go to two people then, then by all means do. There, there's some people causing you real, real trouble and there's a gap in their understanding somewhere that you can't pick out then do that. But I, I would happily waste 28 kids time to do a question once more for those other two. Yeah. Well, sorry, it's not wasting yeah. their time. They're practicing again, just so they can do it correct. Doesn't mean it's not a good use of their time. And it's not in their books. So what? And ju just on that, it's in just on that Craig, so I've written it down, might as well say it now. It's quick as well, right? Because it, it's not like you're spending 10 minutes or anything. It's just a quick fire recheck for understanding. Mm -hmm. Nobody's, nobody's suffering from this at all. Like what I always say, there's this obsession with differentiation. I'm going to go off on one now, just, just to warn everybody. This, this <laughs> obsession with differentiation means that if a child gets something right once, we assume they need to go on a completely different track to a child who's, you know, just got something wrong. And it's <laughs> mad, it's yeah. madness because the child who's got something right once We've no, we've a tiny bit of evidence that they know what's going on. So let's collect some more evidence. Let's give them another question. And if it turns out that they did understand it, well, no great harms come to them. And again, read the research on overlearning. You know, it's a good thing. And the, the cliche, you know, practice to don't practice till you get it right. Practice till you can't get it wrong. And so no, nobody's nobody's going to get annoyed at you for for giving them another question to do and getting it right and feeling great about themselves. And like you say, it. Yeah, oh God, it, it does my head in this. And the final thing I was just gonna say, <laughs> say on this, I think you made a really, really good point about the fact that you shouldn't pretend that everyone's got it. And I see this all the time, you know, two or three kids haven't got it. So the teacher's like, oh, well, we've all got that. And the kids are thinking, well, I haven't got it. But what, what you can do that's really nice, and the whiteboards work really well for this, and this taps into differentiation as well, is let's say you see a child who's got it wrong and you know they suffer low confidence, but actually, it's the kind of example that even your kids who've got it right would benefit from seeing because perhaps it addresses a misconception or highlights something that everyone wants to see. The beauty of mini whiteboards is, unlike cold call, is the responses can be anonymous from the kids. So you could see an example at the back whilst you're scanning that's wrong and then just keep scanning the room and then say, okay, boards down everybody. Now let's imagine a student put this down for an answer. What do you think they've done wrong there? How would you convince them it's right and so on? So you can, as opposed to cold call, you ask Tom, he tells you the wrong answer. He feels crap about himself and his answer is attached to that question. His name's attached to that answer. Whereas with whiteboards, you, one of the main, one of the big reasons I like using them is you can anonymize and you can use those answers and so on. So yeah, that was just my kind of couple of tangents there. Um, yeah, just interrupting you, but I just thought that was worth saying. I'll shut up again there. Well, I just want to add one, one more thing I think, which is, well, maybe two, maybe two things. One is just, is, is take your time here um, and then and linked to that is the benefit it has for behavior management. If you know, if you're certain that kids can do this stuff and the next phase of your lesson is then working silently, if you know they can do it, there's no excuse for them not to be working. Mm. They haven't got to mm. talk to their partner, ask them, oh, I was just asking them for help. I was just doing that. I, I know you can, and the response I use is, I know you can do this. You've shown me two minutes ago. You're great at this content. Keep going off you go. 
or you know, or there's an answer on the board or whatever it is, there's no reason why they need to be doing anything other than working. They don't need to have paused in their work. I know they can do it. I believe in you. I've just seen you do it. You're incredible. Well done. No, nope, don't need to talk to that person because I've seen you can do this. You're incredible. Whatever, whatever, you know, whatever it is. So I think one thing that doesn't get talked about, so, ah, I'm going to slightly yeah. it. I saw a tweet once, um, which is always <laughs> to run you up. Um, someone said, um, all this talk about, about mini whiteboards. I worked in a school where behavior was so bad we couldn't use them. I was thinking, what on earth are you talking about? If I have a class that I need to go and teach where behavior management is a problem, the first thing I'm bringing in with me is a set yeah. of mini whiteboards. I'm going to make all those kids feel successful and I know where to hold the line between what they can do and what they can't do, what they're choosing not to as well. It, it helps me know when they're not working because they're being lazy, when they're talking because not because they're stuck, but because they're bored. Uh, and it helps me know what, what they can do. It helps them know what they can do as well. It helps them be successful. I think it's an incredible tool for behavior management, which no one ever talks about. It's all talked about as, as for learning and, and, and for all that, but, but behavior is, I think it's the most powerful tool. No, that, that's not a well thought out sentence. I'll take that back. It's a very powerful tool for behavior management. That's interesting. I was, again, I was in a, uh, I was at this sixth form college yesterday and I was talking to a lady and she said, I don't, I, I was chatting mini whiteboards, obviously. And she said, no, I, I don't use them. So these, and I said, why? And she said, well, the kids don't like them. And I'm thinking, I bet I know why they don't like them. Because <laughs> yeah. they have to think, right? They, you know, they, they have, have to, to work. Think, that's yeah. what it is. Like, yeah. they, why else wouldn't you like them? You know, because you have to think. And, yeah. but if you can, if you can couple making kids think with making kids feel successful, that's, that's the combo that you need to get, right? Because then everyone's, everyone's happy. Yeah. No, this is amazing. Um, anything else on the responsive um, teaching side of things here, Craig? No. Perfect. But, and uh, just to recap as well, I wondered, uh, again, the terrible question here, I wonder where we're at in the lesson here. Just, just give us some rough benchmarks. So if I, I just recap, do... I'll type sort of time Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do now, you said, you know, a couple of minutes to settle, maybe kind of, you know, four minutes for the actual do now. Exposition, we're maybe yeah. up to 10 minutes in total, so maybe kind of four minutes from that. So that's when you last gave us a bit of a time check. Modeling, what, what do you reckon, what do yeah. you reckon there? Oh. Two, three minutes. quick. This three is minutes. quick. Okay, a couple of minutes for modeling. So we're up to up to twelve. Um, checking for understanding. <laughs> yeah. And responsive teacher. These will all well, be together, right? So, that, and it, I guess it could be anything. Yeah. Right? Let's say ten to. Let's say okay. ten. All right. So let's think. Worst case, let's say we've shaved, we've lost a little bit. So let's say we're what twenty twenty five minutes in, maybe something like that at this stage. Let's say twenty five. Right, 